A Hiker's Guide to Plants of the Desert Southwest, including cactus, wildflowers, native trees, interesting bushes, and the agave family. You'll learn where to find them, how to identify them, when flowers and fruit are available, and which ones are edible. Today's video, wildflowers. Poppies. Let's start out with poppies, because they're widespread throughout the Southwest and incredibly prolific. These are not the poppies you buy on Veterans Day, though they are in the same family. They're small plants with flowers that range from yellow to orange. You'll hear them referred to as Mexican or California poppies. These will be at their peak bloom typically in March and are one of the first wildflowers to blossom and will be more profuse in years with good fall and winter rains. These flowers can cover entire hillsides, so they will be very easy to spot. They open in late morning and close up at dusk, so if you're out early in the morning, you may have to wait for a while for them to open up. You can find them in warmer spots, like along the Gila Canyon section of the Arizona National Scenic Trail in February. The plants and flowers have no food value, but the Native Americans use them medicinally as a sedative. They contain a number of alkaloids, and I'd caution you to not experiment with them. Desert marigolds. Desert marigolds seem to me like the dandelions of the desert southwest. Their little yellow heads pop up everywhere in huge drifts, and the flowers look like a dandelion from a distance. They are very common along roadsides, where the highway departments often spray seed them as a ground cover. It took me years to be able to distinguish these from brittle bush, which I'll cover in the shrubs video. The main difference is brittle bush flowers are on stalks well above the leaves that cover the bush, where the desert marigolds are shorter and the flowers grow immediately above the leaves. After a while, you can also distinguish the leaves, which are more prominent on brittle bush. Fairy dusters. Fairy dusters are one of the very first wildflowers to bloom, as early as February and continuing for several months. Wow, late January. What? I'm just talking to the camera here. Late January and the fairy dusters are already in bloom. Little bees buzzing around there. And are super easy to recognize because instead of normal flower petals, they're kind of brushy looking. They kind of remind me of a starburst type of fireworks. They're actually in the legume family with peas and beans and the mesquite tree, so they produce a pea pod after the flower matures. You'll see lots of bees and hummingbirds on these flowers because they produce tons of nectar. Native Americans used the leaves and stems to make a tea that was taken to ease the pain of childbirth. Lupin. Blooming at the same time, in similar location to poppies, chia, and chicory, are wild lupins. With their wide elevation range, you can find them as late as May up in the mountains. Look at the beautiful meadow of lupine. Just absolutely beautiful. Stupendous. After that, walk up the hill. They are yet another of the pea or bean family. The flower is very pea looking, and their seeds definitely look like pea pods. Their foliage has a distinctive shape that is easy to recognize before it blooms, and their purple blue flower spikes really stand out. The Navajo made a blue dye from the flowers. Ludix. They are taller than lupin, with a very small blossom. Blue dicks were an important food source for Native Americans in southern Arizona, are examples of what scientists call geophytes. These are plants that store energy underground. An example we are all familiar with is potatoes. In fact, blue dick bulbs are sometimes called Indian potatoes. 
The underground part of a blue dick plant is called a corm. If you're a gardener, you know that a, a corm is what you plant to produce a gladiolus flower. Blue dicks often grow profusely in areas where Native American settlements were located. We actually have an oral history of how people would harvest only the large corms and replant the small ones so they could grow to maturity. Chia. While we are talking about blue and purple flowers, let's hit another one that blooms around the same time and was extensively used as a food by Native Americans. The chia, which is a member of the mint family. Yes, the same as ch 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 chia pets. These are easy to identify because they have two purple flower balls on long stems. Native Americans ate the seeds, which are highly nutritious and packed with omega-3 fatty acids. Similar to blue dicks, you will often find chia near historical Native American settlements, where they may have spread some seeds to assure a harvest in the years to come. All right, a beautiful little grove of wildflowers here. Yellow, orange Mexican poppies. And these are chia. Ch -ch -ch chia. If you want to sample the chia seeds, there's a very narrow window of time when you can harvest them because if you go too early, the seeds won't come out, and too late, and they're gone. So let's pop some of these chia seeds, see what they taste like. Pretty mild. Almost a hint of caraway, I would say. But uh, there's more flavor to them than there are to the ones you buy in the grocery store, that's for sure. Different color, too. They're a little bit more brown rather than the black. Scorpion weed. Our next wildflower with blue to purple blooms is scorpion weed. It's not very pretty, but it is everywhere, and I thought I'd better mention it because it is nasty stuff. Don't touch this stuff with your bare hands. It's like poison oak and will cause a burning sensation that lasts for hours. It probably gets its name from the sting that it'll give you. And also, if you look closely at the flower head, it looks like a scorpion coiled up and getting ready to sting. Owl's Head. Let's talk about another purplish flower that produces edible seeds and blooms around the same time. Owl's Head. This flower is in the Indian paintbrush family, and when it's in bloom, the drifts can be spectacular. Some Native American tribes in California ate the seeds, but it doesn't seem to be nearly as popular a food source as chia. I've read conflicting stories about how this flower got its name. But if you look real closely at the flower petals, you'll see some yellow spots that upon close inspection do resemble bird eyes and a beak. Penstemon. Penstemon is a wildflower that you are likely to come across, but it does not grow in large drifts you're more likely to see isolated plants, so it's easy to miss. The way to pick these out is they are by far the tallest of the purple wildflowers, up to four feet high. Hummingbirds love this flower, so keep your eyes and ears open for hummers if you are close to these plants snapping a photo. You'll mostly find the purple specimens, but if you're lucky, you might see a red version called Firecracker Penstemon. Morning Glories Morning Glories, you say? Isn't that something I buy at my garden center? Yes, but these grow wild in Arizona, though I've only seen blue or purple varieties in the wild. They are often quite small as well, but be on the lookout when hiking at about four to 5,000 feet of elevation. That's where I normally see them. The plants are not poisonous, but beware of the seeds. They contain a compound similar to LSD and can be hallucinogenic. Globe Mallow. Globe Mallow is another one of those plants that you are as likely to see while driving in your car as you are on the trail. 
It's a large, bushy plant, about three feet tall. The most common color is orange, but you may see it in lavender as well. It's not a very striking flower, but they can grow in huge drifts that are quite impressive. The best collections I've seen are along the highway between Oregon Pipe National Monument and Tucson. Native Americans appear to have eaten the fruits as they are found in ruins around the desert southwest. Mariposa lilies. Mariposa lilies are arguably one of the most striking wildflowers of the desert southwest. The flowers can be orange or yellow and are easily mistaken from a distance for Mexican poppies. As with chia, desert mariposa are often found near ancient Native American settlements because their dime-sized bulbs were an important food source. The white varieties are called sago lilies and belong to the same genus, Calocortis. Salsify. Salsify is an unimpressive flower to look at, but the entire plant is edible, including the roots, which are best harvested before the flowers open and are said to taste like parsnips. The buds remain unopened for a long time and may be the primary method to identify the plant. The flowers look like small dandelions, but in my opinion, the most photogenic part of the plant are the mature seed heads, which glow in the morning sun. All right, let's see what this stuff tastes like. Pretty good. Not real flavorful, but uh, not bitter or anything like that either. Chicory. Chicory is a name that may be familiar to you from the use of the roots to make a coffee substitute. These cheery flowers have a long bloom time, and when they mature and dry up, the heads look like dandelions, despite the fact that chicory is in the sunflower family. All the parts of this flower are edible, but it's very bitter, and boiling improves the flavor. One way to help distinguish chicory from other white flowers is the jagged edge on the tips of the petals. Datura. Sacred datura is a stunningly beautiful flower that looks a bit like an Easter lily to me and is a member of the nightshade family. It is infamous for its hallucinogenic properties and was used by Native American shamans. If you're a fan of Carlos Castaneda, it's the drug that Don Juan used to become a crow. It blooms during the summer and is often found alongside roads and parking lots or in washes where it gets extra moisture. Flowers tend to wilt during the heat of the day, so get out early if you want a good photo. Thanks for watching this little video on the wildflowers of the desert southwest. If you enjoyed this video, stay tuned. I'm working on the cactus videos right now and hoping to have them out in a month or two. I hope you learned something and that you enjoyed watching it. This series is a new departure from my YouTube channel, and if you found it interesting or useful, I'd love to hear your comments about it. Please click like, subscribe below, or leave me a comment. 